now that we know how to deal with fixed point quantization noise, and since we know how to implement the discrete Fourier transform using the FFT algorithm from before, we could ask a more advanced question, like how sensitive is the FFT algorithm to fixed point quantization noise? So we know that in terms of computational complexity, the FFT algorithm is preferable over the direct computation of the discrete Fourier transform. But how does it fare in terms of quantization noise? Is it more sensitive or less sensitive than a direct computation of the discrete Fourier transform? In order to answer this question, let's recall how the FFT algorithm computed the discrete Fourier transform. So this was done in a set of operations generally known as butterfly operations, where two inputs uh, were given to each stage, one of them multiplied by complex numbers and then followed by either an addition or a subtraction of the resulting numbers. So these were arranged in a sequence of layers that at the end had computed the discrete Fourier transform. Now, if you were to implement the FFT algorithm in fixed point using the, the schematics shown here, that would lead to a particular problem. So can you see what that problem could be? Would it be that you would have a DC shift or a bias, which would cause the effect that even if you input the vector of all zeros, you wouldn't necessarily get the vector of all zeros at the output leading to a shift in the algorithm, which would violate what is predicted by linearity of the exact implementation. Or would it be that you could have internal overflow, meaning that even if the real and imaginary part of the input was known to belong to the range minus one to one, you could have internal signals in the implementation which fell outside of this range minus one to one. Or could it potentially be that you have a loss of conjugate symmetry, where the conjugate symmetry of the discrete Fourier transform given by this expression would fail to hold if you implemented it in fixed point? Well, the answer to the question is option number two. You could have internal overflow. So whenever you add two numbers which are in the range minus one to one, the addition of those numbers are not necessarily within the range minus one to one. So you could have internal overflow after the additions in this schematic. So overflow at this point or that point, if you had two numbers which in magnitude were close to one here, they could exceed one in magnitude after the addition. So this is relatively easily fixed within the FFT algorithm. So what one can do is to make sure that whatever you, whenever you add two numbers, they, already ha they always have a magnitude which is less than one half in order for their sum to have a magnitude less than one. And you could do that by introducing multiplications with one over two at various places in the algorithm or throughout the algorithm. And what this would cause would be a computation not of the discrete Fourier transform necessarily, but one over the n times the discrete Fourier transform, so a scaled version of the Fourier, discrete Fourier transform. But it would guarantee that you would never have overflow in any branch in the algorithm, and this would be preferable. In order to study the amount of fixed point quantization noise in the output, we have to choose one of the values at the output of the discrete Fourier transform or the FFT algorithm in this case. And due to symmetry, we can see that all of the outputs will have the same amount of uh, fixed point quantization noise. So we can arbitrarily pick one of them. So let's suppose that we pick x0 here and study the signal path leading up to that. So doing that, we'll see the following schematic. So here we see all the different branches of the FFT algorithm which contributes to the computation of x0. And we would see a similar picture if we were to pick another x at the output of the discrete Fourier transform or the FFT algorithm. And it will be convenient here to label the layers as well. So we'll refer to the different layers of the FFT algorithm as layer 1 up to layer 3 in this case, or layer p in the general case. And we see that more multiplications happen in the earlier layers rather than in the later layers. So we know what we need to figure out in order to figure out how much fixed point quantization noise is. How much, uh, is how much fixed point quantization noise is introduced in each layer and what happens to this noise as it passes through the FFT algorithm. So what we can see is that noise which is introduced here will be attenuated by multiplications with 1 over 2 times a factor or simply by 1 over 2 in a number of stages before it reaches the output. So even though we introduce more noise at the beginning of the algorithm, the amount of noise due to every noise source at the beginning will be less in the output due to this attenuation. And at the same time, while we introduce less, uh, or have less multiplications in the last layers of the FFT algorithm, that uh, fixed point noise will not be attenuated as much before it reaches the output. But before we can sum up all these noise sources and figure out the total amount of noise that we see in the output of the FFT algorithm, 
we need to recognize the fact that we are doing complex valued multiplications in our implementation of the FFT algorithm. And so far, we have only looked at real uh, valued multiplications in our fixed point analysis. So a complex valued multiplication can be implemented by two or more uh, real valued multiplications. So in particular, if you have a complex valued number and you wish to multiply that with a real valued number, you can implement that using two real valued multiplications. So you multiply the real part and an imaginary part of this complex number with the corresponding real valued number. So the total amount of fixed point noise which is introduced in such a multiplication will be two times the amount of noise which is introduced in an ordinary real valued multiplication, which was 2 to the minus 2b in the b plus 1 sine bit magnitude implementation over 12. So that you'll yield a noise of 2 to the minus 2b over 6 in this case. And that would apply to all these multiplications with a factor 1 over 2. So if you take instead to multiply two complex valued numbers, which would happen when we multiply with the complex phasers at various places in the FFT algorithm, each such com multiplication between two complex valued numbers can be implemented using four real valued multiplications. And this can be seen by simply writing out the complex valued number. So it would be two for the real part and two for the imaginary part. So the total amount of quantization noise caused in such a multiplication would be four times the quantization noise in a single real valued multiplication. So that would yield 2 to the minus 2b over 3. So we have two different types of noise sources of different variances depending on if we multiply with a full complex number or just one of these factors, 1 over 2. Now, for the particular FFT algorithm, we can see that at each layer of the algorithm will have exactly the same number of multiplications of the first type and of the second type. So if we simply take the average of these numbers as the power per noise source in our FFT algorithm, that will yield the correct amount of quantization noise at the output. So we could use the number 2 to the minus 2b over 4, which is simply the average of the two numbers computed previously, as the power of our noise source. So now we are ready to compute the total fixed point quantization noise in the FFT algorithm. So to this end, let's assume that we have a length n FFT, where n is 2 to the p for some integer value of p. And in the examples we've shown previously, p was equal to 3, meaning that we have an 8 point uh, FFT algorithm. So as we already concluded, the average noise source has a variance of 2 to the minus 2b over 4 if we implement the FFT algorithm using complex valued multiplications uh, through the equivalent real valued multiplications at a precision of b plus 1 sine bit magnitude. Then we see that a noise source in layer i gets multiplied by a number of these 1 over 2 uh, factors, either complex factors or real valued factors, but they each have a magnitude of 1 over 2. And this means that each noise source will be attenuated by a factor of 2 to the minus p minus i, because we have p minus i layers between layer i and the output. And this has a consequence that the variance for a noise source at layer i seen at the output will only be 2 to the minus 2 p minus i of the variance at the insertion point in that particular layer or in layer i. But we saw also that we have more noise sources in early layers. So if you count the total amount of noise sources in layer i, you will see that you have 2 to the p minus i plus 1 noise sources. So if you to look at the extremes and you put i equal to p, so the last layer will only have two noise sources as we saw. But if you set i equal to 1, you see that you have 2 to the p, so equal to the number of points of the FFT algorithm in the first layer. And then you'll have a, an exponential relation for the layers in between according to this formula. So now we can compute the full noise variance. So we have the noise variance per source or the average noise uh, variation per source. And then we have the attenuation factor for each layer or for layer i times the number of noise sources which appear in that layer. And in order to get the total fixed point quantization noise of the FFT algorithm, we have to sum that up over the, all the layers, so from layer 1 to p. And we can compute this using a simple geometric sum, and that will give us 2 to the minus 2b times 1 minus 2 to the p. And if we want to express that in the length of the FFT, uh, 1 minus 2 to the p is equivalent to n minus 1 over n. 
Now this expression has an interesting property in that it doesn't grow without bound even if n tends to infinity. So even if we consider the very long FFTs, since this expression here, or the later part of the expression, is upper bounded by 1, we can see that the amount of fixed point noise at the output of the FFT algorithm would be upper bounded by 2 to the minus 2b, regardless of the length of the FFT that we compute. So one should be a little bit careful when interpreting this. So we're actually not computing the discrete Fourier transform with the proposed algorithm, but rather we compute 1 over n times the discrete Fourier transform. So we're actually attenuating the output, which is causing some of this uh, reduction in the amount of fixed point noise at the output. But that said, we can compare this expression with the amount of fixed point noise that we would see in a direct computation of the same quantity. So considering the direct computation of the discrete Fourier transform given by this sum, and if we compute 1 over n times this, it would be 1 over n times this sum. And if we want to avoid overflow in a fixed point implementation of this sum, we could incorporate the 1 over n factor in the complex scalar that we multiply with to get the following expression. So we would see that we take the input sequence and we multiply it with a set of complex numbers here. And we would have n such complex multiplications per output value. And if we assume that the input is generally complex valued, each such multiplication would be a multiplication between two complex valued numbers. And we've seen previously that any such multiplication will, will result in an amount of noise equal to 2 to the minus 2b over 3. And since we had n of them, the total amount of fixed point noise would be this expression times n. So unlike the FFT algorithm, this expression do grow without bound if n becomes large. So if we consider large DFTs or large FFTs, implementing the DFT using an FFT would lead to a significantly lower noise variance at the output when compared to the direct implementation of the discrete Fourier transform. And we can exemplify that for some particular values of n. So if you consider the values of n 4, 8, 16 and 32, we would see this uh, linear increase in the amount of noise that we see in the discrete Fourier transform. And here we have normalized the expression by the amount of noise in a single real valued multiplication, since we haven't specified what B is. And if we compare that to the numbers for the FFTs, we see that this would be significantly less. So in this case, it would be upper bounded by 12, which is due to this upper bound on the amount of fixed point noise at the output of the FFT and the 12 comes from the normalization factor that we use in this particular case. But that said, so at even at 32 we see that the amount of fixed point noise in the FFT algorithm is significantly less than the amount of fixed point noise that we saw in the direct implementation of the discrete Fourier transform. So not only is the FFT algorithm preferable to the discrete Fourier transform in terms of computational complexity, it is also clearly preferable to the direct implementation of the discrete Fourier transform in terms of the amount of fixed point noise caused by a fixed point implementation of the corresponding algorithms. So to summarize, we've seen that the discrete Fourier transform can be compared to the FFTs using the additive noise model. And uh, we can do similar studies of other basic operations in digital signal processing in similar ways. And what we saw at the end was that the FFT is vastly superior to the direct implementation of the discrete Fourier transform, both in terms of the computational complexity as well as in terms of the amount of fixed point noise caused by a fixed point implementation.